Okay, well, so the reason we have you here today is because uh, your content game is on point, and I'm jealous, and I'm trying to figure out how you do what you do without doing all the work. Uh, so your main YouTube has 1.6 million subscribers. You've got another YouTube channel with 100 plus thousand subscribers, a network of ambassadors, each with hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Instagram, 200,000-ish followers or something like that. Um, how are you doing it so well? Like, is there a mentality you think of it as? Like, what is the what is the the logic behind all the social stuff? Yeah, I would say the reason we're doing it well is because we're just willing to suffer for very long <laughs> periods of time, which I feel like you have to do in the the world of content because your early stuff is never going to be viewed. So you're creating content, you know, for your own joy, and then like with enough content, you eventually get this this uh, snowball effect. And you're able to kind of build on it and have enough data to understand what people want and then be able to create content for for what people are interested in. So in the beginning, were you just making videos for yourself? Dude, the beginning, the, the videos were terrible. I mean. Why I, did you start the YouTube channel? Uh, I, I didn't actually. So if we, we take a time machine all the way back to, uh, it would have been February of 2012. I, uh, I had the idea for Beard Brand as this idea to, to unite all the, the urban beardsmen around there i told my buddy john reisinger and he's like oh yeah man that's a great idea he's like a typical ideas guy like entrepreneur and uh, he was all bought into the idea and he's like oh we're going to do this and what we're going to do is we're going to like show the world how to build a brand in 100 days or something so he created the i think he created the youtube channel and we did like a tumblr page and a blog and all this tumblr, stuff wow yeah yeah that's how that's how long we've been around <laughs> And uh, so I think he created like the first couple of videos. And of course, like those videos are terrible because he doesn't have a beard. <laughs> and uh, I created like one video that's like how to grow a beard. And I just like rambled on for like, I don't know, five minutes or something. And that video ended up getting like 100,000 views. And I'm like, oh, maybe we're onto something here. But if if that one video didn't hit at all, then it's very likely that we would have no YouTube channel at all. So it's just kind of very serendipitous that we realize there's opportunity on YouTube uh, in those early days. Um, so one thing I noticed about a lot of your videos, because I do watch a lot of them. You have so many, I can't watch all of them. It's like Rogan. I watch like 10, 20%, which is pretty good. Uh, your messaging often isn't about just beards. It's rather, it's it's actually about confidence. Yeah. So I, I watch your ads. You have that one ad with the the the, the pictures in front of your face. Oh, yeah, yeah. One of the best ads I've ever seen. I'll try to link it over here. Uh, fantastic. But you talk about confidence heavily. Is is that important? Because uh, I feel like it's, I would make videos just like beards are like this. Yeah. You talk about like a deeper thing. Is well, that purposeful? Yeah, or? yeah. I, mean, I don't know if it's purposeful or not, but it's more of just like an extension of, of my own journey and like not having confidence to, to grow a beard out. When I graduated college, everyone told me to shave a beard if you're, if you want to get a job and then like going into the workforce and trying to look a certain way. And like, for me, like the whole reason I was able to grow a beard was because I finally developed the confidence to rock it. And, uh, especially in, in our world in terms of like business, entrepreneurship, sales, doctors, lawyers, there's always this pressure to look a certain way. Hmm. It's when we started, especially back in 2012, that, uh, Beards really, weren't as popular. Yeah. Yeah. Not no, no, no. Like you could not wear facial hair in the business environment uh, when I grew my beard out in 2011. Like it's just, you would get so much shit for it. Huh. So uh, I just wanted to help people with that, like just help them. And and it's all in here, right? It's really not here because this is just, what's the difference between hair growing out of your face and growing up on the top of your head? Like just the location. But, but is, is that, was that a crucial part of why your channel grew so big because it was about that emotional step? Or do you think that had some part? Yeah, I, I think a lot of guys resonated with like the bigger mission of what we're trying to do to, to you know, our tagline, keep on growing to become a better version. I think a lot of people. Great tagline, by the yeah, way. Yeah, okay. that's really good. <laughs> that's some good copywriting. That's really good. Um, we can talk about all of our, our trademarks because I'm quite proud of, of all of them. But um, yeah, I, I just feel like um, in today's world, 2020, especially like you, a lot of guys are losing their tribe, right? You know, uh, churches are kind of going out the window and, you know, like, where is your community? And a lot of guys are trying to find that community that they've lost that maybe existed with, uh, you know, what were they called? The the Shiners clubs that the yeah. guys would join. <laughs> well, and there's a bunch hats. of men's clubs historically. And, and a lot of those kind of, kind of eroded over the years. So online, being able to connect with other people with similar outlook on the life 
uh, has been probably beneficial for for our community. Huh, that's that's really interesting. Yeah, I, I've talked to a lot of people who do social media pretty well, and they always they're like, Neville, what do you what is like your mission, your purpose, what you're trying to say? And I'm like, I don't know, I just run a copywriting company. They're like, yeah. that's not good enough. And so, so I always found it interesting that you always talk about confidence and stuff instead of just beards. Yeah, I that's, mean, because really cool. reality, you can't have a good beard without that confidence. You can't you can't do so much in life without your mind being in the right spot. So, hmm. uh, yeah, that's a big. So part. it's about beards, but about something much bigger than that. The beards. Yeah, is the yeah I mean, self invest. It's about like loving the guy who looks back at you in the mirror. That's uh-huh. what we like to say. So, like, once you can really love that guy, and for a lot, the catalyst is grooming, right? Just the act of. Uh, that daily ritual of looking good. But for some other people, it could be exercise or diet or, you know, like bowling or whatever. But um, you've got to find whatever that catalyst is. And for our customers, for our audience, you know, beard care, grooming is that catalyst to, to start loving the person they are.